Queen George. Adam Levy. Welcome. Thank you. To the Mint Podcast. podcast. And that the was crowd a good. Goes wild. Woo, that was a good intro. That was a good intro. How are you doing? I am <clears> doing really well. We are in Tarzana, California, at my crib. The crib of cribs, you if are, I may say. Yes, you are on one couch. I'm on the other couch. Mm -hmm. Soon enough, we will have cameras in here to record this. It's going to be good because this is a nice corner. It's a nice corner. This corner deserves cameras. It does. Yeah. You're back. I'm back. On the, on the podcast. I'm back on the podcast. I'm also back in the United States. Where were you? I was in Costa Rica. Ooh. Living my best life. What were you in there? I was uh, being a complete stranger. I was in a place where nobody knows me. It's not like I'm famous. Like, yeah, my grandma knows me here, right? Mm. It's really not that big of a deal. Right, right, right. But it was so nice to be in a different country and plan my whole um, drop and EP rollout from a completely blissful place. Just like ocean and jungle and tangled hair. The whole thing. Tangled hair. How long were you there for? Three weeks. Wow. Yes. On the beach? R yeah. There was, so there was a beach and then the, where I was staying was on this hill and there was a huge rocky mountain to get there and it was a... What's it like writing music in a setting like that? <sighs> writing music in a setting? I mean, the music writes itself. There's no... You mm. just kind of show up. I, I try to create experiences that... Where, where I just have to show up and the inspiration happens for me. Um, I actually have yet to look back at my journal and my notes. I made it a point to write any time I was just anywhere without thinking. So I'm curious, uh, in retrospect, what that's going to look like, or if that will even become a song, because I just wrote a lot of poetry. Do you write better during the day or at night? It can hit me at any time. It can hit me. I've woken up from dreams with ideas. I've woken up in the middle of the night. I have voice memos of like mumbling in my sleep. It, it can happen in broad daylight. It really, it just depends on, on the wave. It's just like it comes through, I would say, as opposed to me bringing it out. I just have to enter spaces that... Um, support that vessel. Where was the most random place <clears throat> you've recorded or written a song? Oh my god. Um, this is really bad. Oof. This is really bad. <laughs> oh my god. Um, a memorial? Oof. <laughs> it's bad. I had an idea and I went outside and I recorded it. I, I know. It's really bad. You just like left the memorial? I, it was just for a minute. It was just to get the it's idea. It's Whatever. A minute I mean, too long. Um, it was just, it, but, but when the idea goes, it's gone. I, that's probably the worst place. Uh, I pulled over on the street a couple of times. Sick. You're back. <laughs> I'm back on, on the podcast. <laughs> what a way to start. This. Yeah. What a way, <laughs> what a way to start the episode. Right, take two live. Take okay. two live. For those uh, who are not <laughs> with us, we've taken about thirty six takes, dying of laughter and crying. I, and I wish you guys could hear all of them. Maybe I'll include a few. Um, a blooper reel, if you will. A blooper. I actually can't believe we're having a normal conversation right now. I'm not going to lie to you. See, we talk like 12 times a day. Minimum. At least. Mm -hmm. And this feels way too formal for me. Yeah, I need you to... I, I mean... You know, as a podcaster, one of the most difficult things to do is to have a conversation as if there's nothing recorded. Yeah, I feel very nervous right now. If you're sitting at a right dinner now. table or something. Yeah. I feel nervous truly because of these mics because we, we talk all day in every shape and form like in happiness and sadness so to have mics is like i don't know let's La pretend like they're not here shall yeah. we last time they were uh last time you were on oh no it's already starting yeah, if it's <laughs> <laughs> keep, keep yeah. doing it though that, that's, right. that's where the juice is gonna be <laughs> okay yeah last time you were on we were in east denver right it was november it was february mm. adam was it yeah Jeez. Jeez. It was fully it was fully February. Yeah, cuz it was my birthday. It was your oh, birthday. Oh yeah, that's right. That's right. Remember that's why East Denver planned East Denver cuz they were like it's Adam Levy's birthday for right. the podcast. Right. Yeah, it was so nice of them. So nice of them. They so really nice. didn't have to. Just they didn't have to. So yeah, we were at East Denver. Um I just performed at the event that you put on. Yeah. Well, that you performed at. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> Which is how I opened this. <laughs> <laughs> Which is the one that I put on. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. And um, we were sitting in my hotel room. But we were talking not the about. Point. We were, <laughs> not the point. No, not the point. Not the point. <laughs> we were talking about um, at East Denver mm -hmm. how you. The title of the episode is How how You Growth Hacked um, Over 100 Collectors yeah. on Ethereum during East Denver. Um, 
and gave out free tickets as NFTs and um, and did this whole like spiel, which we'll have you talk about in a second, but just introduce it. So for anybody that didn't catch the episode, you can go and check it out and listen to it. I really encourage it. It was a fun one. And basically what we did is we issued NFTs as uh, as tickets. People collected them for free on Polygon. And then they would use those tickets as a way to come and watch you perform live during Denver. The beauty behind it is it was a highly curated crowd of OG Ethereum people. And over 100 people have collected one of your NFTs now. And from there, uh, we created this experience where they could scan their QR code and be able to mint a one of one song that you were going to perform. It was one of your newer songs mm-hmm. that I fought for and I won, thankfully. Um, and, um, yeah, it was a fun experience. It was a, a, a big learning lesson for me, which funny enough. Okay. I talk about this on the podcast with you on that episode, specifically how you know a lot about like your audience in web two and mm-hmm. where they come from. And I mean, you have very surface level data, right? Mm-hmm. And in web three, you don't have that. Like you weren't able to tell who your collectors were. You just got a bunch of addresses. Funny enough, that inspired me to have a new idea that uh, I ended up taking to ETH Amsterdam a few weeks ago and uh, presented it to like this uh, team of friends that we ended up building this MVP over the weekend. And we won the hackathon because of the idea, because of you, because of the, the, the project that we worked on together funny enough i talked a lot right now there's a lot to, to wait this to break is down. interesting yeah though. yeah i never told you that no yeah you never you never gave me the breakdown all right really quick let's reflect on denver for okay. two seconds yes okay? recap I, I, really quick recap yeah go oh man i'm nervous <laughs> okay i need to pretend like this mic isn't here yes ready uh reflect on denver um, NFT tickets, NFT concert, tickets, yes. minting one of one, QR codes everywhere. Wow, thank you. Food. I, I, when I think about ETH Denver, <laughs> I think about <laughs> just putting my QR codes all over the venue. Like, so there were two QR codes, right? We had the QR codes for my Discord and QR codes for the one of one for that, my new song at the time. And I just remember my focus because we talk a lot about just one thing at a time, right? And that's just been like the biggest bone to bite on in entering web three for me (laughs) and i just remember going okay one thing at a time i meet one thing at a time and my biggest focus was new people new people new people i know my web two people i know what they like and here i was in front of a room full of people that you know function on a completely different wavelength and are used to something totally different and i'm an alien to them and they're aliens to me and um it was just about getting to know a new audience and the way that we did the ticketing completely opened my mind. And, you know, I've obviously brought that into the way that I want to do things in the future, but yeah, Denver for me was just a whole lot of newness, whole lot of newness. So like I said earlier, because of Denver, Mm -hmm. um, I learned a lot through that experience. I'm a big believer that at least me personally, I learned by doing, um, when I was in school, I sucked at like looking at the textbooks. I actually got like C's, D's, and F's on all my exams. Same, except for choir and lunch. Oh, yes. Lunch, I aced. 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 I ate like a mofo. <laughs> but your your event, the one that you performed at, the trial that we went through using Dystopia Labs' mm-hmm. uh, Impish ticketing service, mm-hmm. um, opened my mind to new insights. So because of you, I thank you. And I thank you. And, um, it's always fun having you on and I wanted to have you on specifically, even though you're not a part of the initial lineup of season five, you were a part of season four. Um, it's always fun to have past speakers on and to do like these recap episodes and kind of like check in every once in a while, mm-hmm. um, especially with people that I love so much and that I love seeing what they're doing and I really believe in them. I also think that that speaks a lot to what we're trying to do here. Um, all of us in Web3, I think it would be truly a waste if we just had our good first impressions and good first dates especially with shows like yours that do give people a lot of insight um because we do make a lot of mistakes a lot along the way and it would just be a true bummer if we didn't um come back to the drawing board in, in in a group setting like this for people to hear um i would love more of that so since you'd love more of that we're doing it now um and from denver to now okay Mm -hmm. a lot has happened you said february so now it's may yeah that was in february it's actually exactly a month 
I think it was February 17th. We're filming this or recording this on May 17th. Interesting. Yeah. Funny enough. So February, so that was what, three months now? Is it? I, yeah. Very much March, actually. April, May, yeah. Yeah, three months. three months. I've done a bunch of shows since then. Mm-hmm. I did a couple in New York. I did a couple you did, in LA. You did Good Karma. I did Good, I did good Karma. Yeah, yeah, that was my first time ever doing uh, Good Karma. Shout out to them. I love them. They really just took me in like yeah. family. Shout and out to them. Till now, I mean, it, that relationship is just growing and really such beautiful people who... I, I remember walking into the soundtrack and feeling like I was getting a hug. It's, I, I don't know how to explain it. I, you know, when you perform a lot, you walk into venues, the initial vibe is the initial vibe, the, and that carries. The funniest part about it is when Grady came to introduce you. <laughs> <laughs> this was the, the funniest part. <laughs> introduce you and everyone, King George. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen... I'm so happy to introduce King George. <laughs> Man, Man. Oh. It's Queen. Queen George. <laughs> um, yeah, did get the Good Karma Showcase uh, back in March. Performed a lot since then. Uh, got my whole EP done. All the songs Woo-hoo. are kind of being finalized right now. I have about one or two mixes that are just waiting to be signed off on. And... Um, yeah, early June. It is going to belong to the world and so, uh, no longer to me. And you're you're doing it. I mean, you came to me like, Adam, I want to do this in a Web3 native way. Yeah. So what does that mean to you, doing something in a Web3 native way? What that means to me in a very broad term is, uh, is redefining uh, my experience as an independent artist and, and trying to push the boundaries of what, what it means to be independent. And when I came to you and said, Adam, I want your help. I want to do this in a Web3 format is, was, was me saying, how far can we take this? And, and, you know, how many new people, how many different people can I get interested in what I'm doing? How many new people can I connect with? How many new heads, people who I'm al- an alien to and vice versa? Um, just, you know, shake, shake the mold a little bit. And, you know, it's very easy to kind of lose hope, therefore lose sight in the standard Web 2 way, uh, especially in a world where people are like, oh, virality is king and, you know, sign or or die and wait around. <laughs> I just realized I don't want to wait anymore to release anything or do anything. And he, in Web 3, there's this awesome opportunity, huge opportunity to just put yourself out there because people will want it. And. You know, you don't need anything standard, quote, anymore. So, being not a part of the norm, Mm -hmm. how do you think about that? Like, why do you think you're not a part of the norm? Why do you fit with that so well? Well, I think it, it goes back to the kind of music I make. I think that my, my music, uh, the music that is on this EP is, is not, pop it, i don't see it fitting anywhere truly i don't i i listen to my music and i grab my face and i hold my head in my hands and i go this is gonna hit or it's gonna miss and it nothing excites me more than <laughs> that kind of jump because my music to me doesn't feel like it fits anywhere it doesn't fit in a box it doesn't fit in you know a lot of times a lot of meetings i've had you know meetings sometimes i sit in these meetings with God knows who and labels and whatever. And they they go, so what do you do? What kind of music do you make? Because it makes sense. They want to try to make sense of you. And I'm like, how am I going to tell this girl that it doesn't fucking make sense? How am I going to tell her? You know, it's just, it's just a a product of all the sounds and cultures and flavors that I've been raised on. And it was made in a different country as well. And, and where I find myself really fitting in in web three is that there is a big stage for anything that feels other. And, uh, a big stage for things that you can't necessarily name and because you don't have to just do shit that you like and that speaks to you because it's not rocket science it's frequency based and vibe based and if it speaks to you it really might speak to someone else and that multiplies when it's honest so i'm finding that to be very invigorating and interesting and honest and that's the pull Mm. for me in web3 it's a very uh limitless space and it's exciting as someone who doesn't exactly feel like her music fits. So part of part of not fitting in is, well, something I've talked about on the podcast is 
music artists being forced to make music in a certain structure in a way that it goes viral on TikTok or that there's dances associated with it. Yeah. And it's a process that's not really designed for everyone, right? I think Web3 is that platform where innovation is rewarded, right? There are no real algorithms. The only real algorithm is maybe trying to get uh, viral on Twitter. There's mm-hmm. there's methods, there's there's like resources, there's things of that nature, um, playbooks for that yeah. matter. But the stats and the tips can only take you so far. Yeah, and it's it's not controlled by by an entity that has up above power that can determine whether or not something gets exposure, mm-hmm. right? AKA a lot of these web two platforms. Hence you coming to me and me being so excited. You tell me, Adam, I want to release, release this EP in a web three native way. I was fired up. I'm a big fan of your music. I love your mm-hmm. stuff. Um, I, I'll always like support you because I just feel so aligned and connected to what you do. And there's, there's music like yours doesn't exist in my, in my opinion. Um, and when something brings you happiness and something brings you joy, uh, it's hard to kind of like push it away. Thank you. Um, so I'm re- I'm excited for this up and coming EP. Can you walk me more through it? How much of it was written in Costa Rica or what's the origin of it? Yeah, what's the so first song that you're going to be releasing? How do you plan to release it? Yes. All these yes, things. Yes, yes, yes. Um, so Costa Rica was so fresh. I mean, this is just a, a kind of a reset from working on this EP. So nothing from Costa Rica will be on this. This mm. was a, this was a me, a meet trip. Okay. Uh, so the EP is Queen George and Amit, my, my real self, went on this trip. This has nothing to do with that. It was a nice uh, a necessary reset. But um, the first song I'm going to be releasing off of it is called Boded. And uh, that's a Hebrew word. It means alone. And uh, it's about me being with someone who was alone. And I didn't want to be with someone who wanted to be alone. It's that simple. And I wrote that uh, in France last summer with a wonderful group of producers, uh, Dean Woodson, Jean Castel, Edouard Algaillon, I think that's how you pronounce his name, at a, a castle called La Prade in Bordeaux in France. And I'm going there again this summer. Uh, long To make a very, could be long story short, we uh, huddled up in France during a time where I was going through a lot. During a time when I was going through a lot. And... Um, we wrote all. We wrote a bunch of music, and that was it. And I, I didn't know where, what else to do with myself at the time, but write this music. And uh, there, are, from France, there's going to be Boded, minimum wage, uh, keep it together, and hero. And then two other songs are, if I ever go down, and uh, which is already out, but that needs to have a home on my first project very aligned with the rest of the music and California boys, which was written here. Uh, but France is kind of the focus. France is the heart with this. And, uh, my favorite song out of the EP, I've gotten the, the luxury of being able to, uh, to listen to it quite a bit. Um, you should find a way to create some type of teaser. Now that I think about it, of like Mm. some of the people that collected some of your initial, uh, like uh, ticket NFTs during East Denver, Find a way to show them and share with them previews, at least the ones that are in the Discord. I feel like that'd be cool. I would yeah. love that. Um, I'm just thinking like little out loud snippets. Here. Yeah, like little sound bites. That could cool. be interesting. Um, but okay, favorite song. I love Boded. There's nothing like Boded out there. And I'm actually I'm dropping that on sound on Thursday. Oh, sick. Yes. Okay. I'm dropping that on sound on Thursday. Is that I'm you super chose excited. to do that one? Okay. Yes. Okay. I chose to do this one because it's it's just it, I, I oh, don't yeah, think right. okay. anything else exists. I like don't know why song. I thought it was California Boys for a second. No. Boded. Boded. Why, uh, why Boded? Because I don't think it sounds like anything else. It To me, I, I hear it and I go, who made that? I don't even know if that's good or bad. I Really, I, I'm not even sitting here like, oh, it's a wonderful, beautiful piece of music. I really, oh. it just, I hear it and I'm like, what the hell is that? That's got to be first. Like throw throw them into the pool <laughs> one by one. <laughs> um yeah it really is a marriage of uh, of the feeling when i wrote it of all my cultures and just i don't know the music that i really resonate with sounds that i resonate with so i decided to uh make that my first sound drop i'm so happy that they're having me uh on their platform 
think they're doing great work and they're fucking trailblazers and um uh, really excited to release this with them so uh yeah that'll be a few weeks before the rest of the music comes out what's up guys adam levy here sorry for the quick pause but i wanted to give some love to one of our nft sponsors who's been helping make this season a reality they go by coinvise and on coinvise you can create a personal or community-owned social token on ethereum or polygon coinvise also helps you create incentives through token rewards and bounties NFT business models, and bot integrations for Discord. Discover more by visiting coinvise.co today. All right, back to the episode. So before the rest of the music comes out, we have the first song that you want to release. Yes. Right? It's on sound. Mm -hmm. And I've had a bunch of music artists on the podcast, and I've always run this question, or I think I've always run this question by them, um, and it's pure out of curiosity for me. How do you kind of come to terms with the format and the medium in which you release a song, an EP? How do you know whether you should do it as an addition, as a one of one initially, um, as a music video first, as an audio file first, with a graphic, without a graphic? Like there's so many different ways Honestly, to Adam, do it. You just don't know. You don't know. <laughs> you just don't know. And you go with what feels good and what you want people to have so why did an edition format as as kind of like the introduction to the first song on your ep feel good this felt good because first and foremost i know that this might be a little tiny piece of it but right under where the song plays there's a huge box for where the story is number one i like that viscerally it is story oriented on sound I like the I like how friendly it is. I like that it is catered towards people and and connecting with people. It makes it really friendly and easy as a supporter, as a listener, whatever you are, you come to their site and you go, "Wow, I'm wanted here," and they want me to understand and they want me to connect. Um, I especially felt that with the ability to do you know the golden egg situation. Um, I chose to have my golden egg winner. It's basically like. It's a random winner mm -hmm. of the collectors uh, that gets a prize that none of the other collectors get. And for me, for mine, it's going to be a pair of tickets to any uh, three Queen George shows in my career. Mm. So <laughs> I could pop off in a year and play Madison Square Garden and they would still be able mm, to, cool. to redeem their two tickets. To me, I'm like, okay, cool. I, when I say three shows, I mean any three shows. <laughs> so let's do it. And then um, for... The collectors in general for anyone who collects it's just it's gonna be um like a compilation of the iphone voice memos from the day that i created the song from empty canvas to final product and fights and ideas and banter back and forth but kind of like a highlight reel of like the turning point moments in the in the creative process because that to me is something that i really want to share with people uh that's and, and so i just felt like this is a a really safe space for that and for people to connect and, and see the raw process. And that's what I that's what I like about them. But truly, I won't know until I do it. Yeah. <laughs> I won't I, I like this thus far, right? But I haven't done the drop. I don't know. I'm kinda learning as I go, but I'm excited to touch back and let you know how it went in retrospect. Walk me through like the emotions. I feel like it could be very nerve wracking. Yeah. Preparing for the first drop. A lot of question marks. Because you just don't know. You want your you want your stuff to go well. It's like writing a diary and putting it out in the world and hoping people like what they what they read. And uh, at some point, I, honestly, it stopped me from putting out music for years. And I never understood that that's what it was. I always said, oh, I got to wait for the right team. I would always kind of kind of say, oh, this isn't the right time. This isn't the right this. And, and I realized that actually this morning I was brushing my teeth and I was thinking about this drop and I'm like, I I'm nervous. Wait, why? And then I'm like, wait, because I'm putting my art on a pedestal for people to buy and support and decide on whether or not it's worth it or whether or not they like it. And there, there, there's a lot with that. So a big part of you has to go, all right, I put it out and I move on and, and I make room in order to make room for the next thing. And uh, so that's, that's how I'm feeling right now. That's where you're catching me right now. I'm interested to see how I feel day of the drop. Yeah. I, you called me earlier today um feeling very emotional mm -hmm. um if i'm able to share yeah yeah because yeah. i think a lot of a lot of what happens in 
crypto or at least on socials everything always looks fun and like glamorous and people this don't... random person just made twenty thousand dollars yeah and like, what yeah it's how, like how yeah. who gave you that yeah and <laughs> A lot of the process can be <laughs> incredibly overwhelming, yeah. um, especially leading up to it. Like you said, like you don't know how the world is going to respond, how they're going to react. You just know it's your baby. Yeah. Um, yeah, I I applaud you. I think it's a really, I think it's a really, it's a really like vulnerable way to release something. I think Sound did a great job in kind of like yeah. doing, uh, perfecting the model for not perfecting it's still a work in progress but really like getting to the point where you're able to better connect with the artist um and and the fans who enjoy the art from the artist right the music artist yeah but a good point that you're making is that it also makes it very friendly for the artist Mm -hmm. it's a very comfortable comforting space what does a collector mean to you like how do how do you think about what a collector means versus an everyday listener um, to me, a collector is somebody that I, somebody that becomes a part of my life and my journey. That is someone who read your diary and went, that, that's cool. I, I, there was a line in there that sounded like something I felt last week and maybe we could get coffee next week and talk about it. That's what a collector feels like to me. It's, is that the relationship you want to have? Yes, absolutely. Well, why like and other, wh- other people would, would be like, oh, it's so time. Con- it's like such a time constraint. It's no, like why so... do I do this? Then I would have went to be an accountant. I, I'm here because I like human connection, right? Like I, I, it's funny enough that I came to Web three for real human connection. But if this is a medium of doing that, then absolutely, yes. I, I want people to go. I heard something in that that reminded me of myself. And can we talk a little more about it? I, I like this, and I want more because it brought out something in me that I liked. Because that's how human interaction works. So to me, that little hub of people it, that that's a that's a seed that i want to water it's it's yeah listeners are, are wonderful and i am so grateful for anybody who takes the time to listen to my music even if it accidentally comes on shuffle really but like for someone to go oh that that sparked something in me yeah fuck yeah i want to nurture that yeah fuck yeah let's get coffee next week mm-hmm. I, because that's a it's a give and take relationship yeah in a really nice way Give and give. That's a really good way to put it. This is just, not to be fooled, this is just another medium of connection. This is this is brilliant because it's just another way. We created another way. We went all the way to computers to create another way to connect with each other. That's crazy. Look at it. If you tear all this shit away... It's just to do what we're doing right now, to find other pe- like-minded people who believe in each other, who can then go, do you want to meet next week? This is going so well so far. We connected online. There's no way we won't connect in person. Yeah. Look what we did for human connection. It's, it's mind-blowing when you just simplify it. QG, what do you what do you identify as? Like, What is your identity? In 2022, you want to ask me that I question? I want to ask you that. <laughs> you want to know why I want to ask you that? Because I know you so well. Um, Yet I feel like Queen George is like your alter ego Mm -hmm. in a sense. Yeah. It's my... uh... And it's like, oh my God, what is your identity? (laughs) Mm -hmm. But no, but but this this artist image that you're portraying yourself as is Queen George. I I obviously know it, but Queen George, like Queen George. Mm -hmm. It's like something so like feminine, queen, yet so masculine, George, right? Every man needs a woman. Every man needs a woman. But, I mean, that's not really true. It's just, it really fit in the, this moment, actually. <laughs> you just, you need whatever you want, honestly. You go get what you need. <laughs> Do your thing. <laughs> um, honestly, Queen George, I, I don't remember if we talked about it in the last one, but King George is a famous street in Tel Aviv. Spent a lot of time there. It was just an idea for the name of my first project <laughs> at the time. And then every time I went on stage, I stepped into this body, this alter ego. And I really enjoyed stepping into something on stage and stepping right back into my personal self off stage. And I really started to enjoy the separation. I enjoy it now. I enjoy going to Costa Rica and riding an ATV in the dirt and the mud and feeling like a meat separate from this life. Because, you know, I used to think music was absolutely everything. Really. 
I used to sit here and be like, music is everything. Yes, it, it is a lot. But it is not everything. And the second it is everything, I'm fucked. Because <laughs> there's a lot. There's mental health. There is emotional space. There are boundaries. There are things that we, if we want to really learn from other artists, we, we want to build healthy walls. And I personally, I, I know myself. I've gotten to know myself as I've gotten older, as a woman especially, and realize that I want to have a separation between me, Amit, who is my parents' daughter and a friend and, I don't know, maybe a mother one day, <laughs> and this person on stage. I need that to be a part of my life, not my whole life. It is something I love and I, I feel lucky to have this gift, but I feel like it can't be my whole being. Mm. And so that's been a really healthy way for me to separate that. And I just like the name Queen George. I can't tell you that there's, you know, crazy meaning to the name. I think about that sometimes. I'm like, shouldn't George mean something to you? And honestly, just I heard it in my head once and I went, that's it. And I just didn't think about it. Maybe it'll make sense in reverse. We spoke about that earlier, how everything makes sense backwards, but it just feels right. Do you ever find yourself turning on that alter ego like random times during the day when you go to the market? Absolutely. Or something? Absolutely. What is that like? It's just something that exists within myself. I mean, it's, uh, it's uh, honestly, now that I really think about it, no. What am I saying? I could, I could think so for a moment at, at the gas station, but truly it's just when I'm on stage or when I need it in a session, when I feel like I can't really get my shit together and I need to get the take, I go, I mean, stop. What would Queen George do right now? It's just, it's the best version of myself that I turned into something real. And I said, why can't I be that? Mm -hmm. It's me. It's just a separation that I've, that I've built and love. So what, what version of Queen George is highlighted in, in Boded? Um, this hmm, that's a that's a really interesting question. I've never thought about that. I've thought a lot about this song, and I've never thought about it mm. from that perspective. Um, I think the part of Queen George that that is human. <laughs> I've turned her into this persona that is absolutely untouchable. This is the part of Queen George that is human and and divine and in pain and she's so she can't believe she's in such pain that she has to turn it into this grand composition of music <laughs> um that was really my way of dealing with what i went through queen george at that time queen george was my way of dealing with that but um boded is uh boded uh, means alone in hebrew and it's about me being with someone who wanted to be alone. And I realized one day that I wanted that person alive, alive and thriving here with me and not numb and, and dead and not here. So that's, that's exactly what that song is about. Uh, but yeah, it feels big. It feels kind of larger than life. Sometimes I can't believe it's me. Uh, hence the alter ego. One thing that you're really good at that I really admire is you're really good with people. Thank you. Um, you're really, really good with people. I you're, really love people. People are yeah. good to me. That's why. You really know how to connect with people. And I got to tell you, a lot of my conversations on the podcast, I've done over 200 episodes. Um, being a podcaster, you have to put yourself in a position where you have to try to connect with people very fast, very intimately, right? And get to know them and ask them questions without really knowing who they are. Maybe you read something online about them or you followed some of their tweet threads. You know they're good at some type of subject. And spending a lot of time around you has taught me how to be more of a human and less of a podcaster. Beep boop. Beep boop. No, yeah. no, yeah, seriously. Yeah, yeah. I appreciate it. And that's that. why I think you're going to do so well in this space Thank you. because at the end of the day, it comes down to people. This is just another medium of connection. Building any type of community, it all comes down to people. Um, and you're, you're in, when you're put in a situation where you're forced to make something out of a, a group of people, you, you're really good at that. So thank you. I'm really stoked to see your journey. And you've you've been trying. You've failed. You've succeeded. You're learning. And may I say, on the note of people, it mm. has been a fucking challenge for me to uh, translate the human connection that I feel, that I kind of pride myself on, that I really enjoy 
into like a virtual setting, it has been very challenging. We spoke about that this morning. Very challenging for me to to translate that and have that reflect online. And I feel like I have to work really hard for it, but I'm here for it. Yeah. I really am. So with that, I'm stoked for your drop Thank on, you. on Thursday. Uh, I'm really excited to see how you release the EP uh, in a web creative way, which I'm sure we'll be collaborating on more yeah. as the time comes. Because you'll also be dropping on catalog. Yes. So um, I'm dropping right. this okay. on sound now. I'm going to do a, an awesome catalog drop cool. uh, right before the EP uh, in light of the EP itself. So I'm really, really excited. Really excited. Good people in the space. I've really gotten lucky and gotten to meet some awesome people. You went from not really knowing anybody in the space to mm-hmm. making awesome relationships and, and friendships and performing a good karma and and just being at the right place at the right time. And again, it goes back to me saying you're really good with people. I give a knack for that. <laughs> Thank you. How how do you do that? How have you managed to do that in such a short period of time? Showing up to events with with a lot of happiness and excitement and genuine uh desire to to enhance each other's journeys in life and in this space this space is a little piece of that but looking at someone and going like really reading them and going is there a vibe between us and is there chemistry here as people i mean just honestly i i understood that my strong suit is is showing up and speaking to people in person and it's there are, you know, rare are the opportunities in Web3 that you get to really hang out with people in real life. So every conference that there was, every event that there was, I, I went and because I just trust myself in those settings. Um, it really just, I don't know, just like you would at, at, at a party. You vibe with someone or you don't. It's a really honest interaction. And then you, you kind of go from there. And if you can, uh, if you can help each other in some way, fuck yeah. I mean... Just looking, looking for that and looking to do that for people. Yeah. I don't know. I think too many people get caught up in like trying to think like, okay, what what can you do for me type of mentality? It's a lot of the mentality in LA, actually. It is, and it's, it's fucking rough, and I think I need to leave. <laughs> do you ever yeah, feel same. that? <laughs> I need to leave, definitely. Yeah. I mean, I, and then also just entering relationships and going – Okay, who cares? I mean, are you are you cool? Is this fun? We're having fun, yeah. right? Okay, and that's it, and that's enough. We we can't overthink everything. We really can't. Look, on one end, I'm I'm very like grateful and very I feel very lucky, and yeah, I really enjoy what I have, and I, and I really appreciate everything that I have. Um, but this like this mentality of, I don't know, like, what can you do for me versus how can we grow together? It's very it's very present here. Yeah. Um and I I've, I've also been noticing that energy um across crypto Twitter as well. It's like less about wag me, like we're all going to make it. And ever since the bear market kicked in, uh it's been interesting to see how attitudes and characteristics and how how people's energy is like shifting, yeah. you know. And I guess all the, the the bear market always vets people, right? It always filters people out. Um the same people who joined in the high will not stay throughout the low. Um, and Just going like anything. And, and going to these events and going to these conferences will help people kind of like rejuvenate, right? Reconnect on Absolutely. a more intimate level. So I'm looking forward to it. There is beauty in the bear market. Uh, yes, there I don't is. even know how we got to this conversation, but I'm stoked for your drop Thank on you. Thursday. Me too. Where can we learn more? Where can we find more? Um, Twitter, uh, queengeorge.com. What's your Twitter? Uh, it's I am Queen George. And uh, I am, I am, because sometimes people do just I am, <laughs> but I am Queen George. Uh, I post a lot, a lot of random thoughts, a lot of updates, a lot of pictures, singing videos, whatever. Just go, <laughs> just go message me. Let's be friends. I would love to connect with as many people as possible. And uh, yeah, thank you for having me. I love coming. You're always welcome. I'll probably call you later. Until next time. This is a different vibe. <laughs>